Hey everyone. Well, if you're like me, you've always dreamed of having a dream garage. And um, my dream garage consists of a few things that the current garage that you're looking at does not have. One being very high ceilings. These are eight, eight and a half feet. Um, but uh, in order to use a lift, well, to get the most out of a lift, you definitely need 12 foot six or better. Um, you also need tons of room for your tools. I've got room for the tools, but as you can see, every wall is covered with something. Um, and you need room to work, which I really don't have. This garage is 26 by 26 and a half feet. And it's, don't get me wrong, it's a good size garage. Um, I would have killed for this garage years and years ago. I was very excited that the house had it when uh, we bought here. But um, for somebody like me, I need a little bit more space. So I made the decision to build a kind of dream garage for me. So I started by getting some quotes um, uh, in terms of having it built, stick built. And uh, those quotes came in at over $100,000 and or doll hairs and uh, I'm not gonna sell the wife on a hundred plus thousand dollar garage that just was not happening so I thought well you know what I don't mind looking at a metal building you're not really gonna see much of it anyway so why don't we try metal and believe it or not when all said and done metal was looking at well over sixty thousand dollars before the foundation and uh, yeah didn't like that idea either so after getting thoroughly discouraged I um, started pricing it out myself if I were to build this thing and what would that look like. So I'm going to post up some videos, this being the first one of a series, as I kind of go through this project and hopes that it helps some of you that are in a similar predicament and uh, you can kind of judge for yourself whether this is the right move or the wrong move, but let's go through it. I'm not going to hide anything from you, including the costs. I'll show you exactly what I'm paying, um, how I'm saving money where I can and um and what i you know what this whole thing entails so currently my existing garage there you see is 26 by 26 and a half my proposed addition is a 40 by 40 off the back of that this wall will be opened up and so i'll essentially have 70 feet deep by 40 feet wide with an oversized door here another um, regular size 8 by 8 garage roll-up door in the back so I can get mowers and that type of stuff out of there. It's going to have a couple of windows on each side. These three will be spaced evenly with the existing window that's on the existing garage. And uh, yeah, that's the plan. So um, from a framing perspective, nothing too earth shattering there. Very basic framed. Um, here's a idea what my lot looks like so you can kind of see where existing driveway is the house and what this garage is going to look like as well as my setback so plenty of room on the setback side just got my permit the other day which is great you are now looking at uh, I guess this would be the hopes and dreams sheet here what I have pieced out um, in this price includes residing the existing garage which needs to be done anyway and I need it to, to match the rest of the house I'm going to build everything myself with the exception of trusses. I'm having trusses or had trusses engineered and built for this, which um, was not a whole lot more expensive than if you did it yourself. But the building inspector and myself appreciate it because I am not a structural engineer. I could build it and I'm sure it would be fine, but I would be overbuilding it using more material than I would need to to be safe. And at the end, I still really wouldn't know if it's going to handle the snow load that um, that we get up here in the Northeast. So I thought it was my best option here to have a company design these and build them, fabricate them for me, and I will just lift them into place. So the total for this uh, was 4100 bucks. That's 20 trusses. Uh, they're going to be spaced 24 inches. Uh, my frame is going to be 2x6, spaced 16 inches, so about 4100 bucks for all the trusses, including the gable ends. Well, we can go through this. Um, garage, the foundation itself, big chunk of that, and actually that number isn't right. That's going to be going up at least 1000 bucks because I've decided I was going to build it only 36 feet deep because that was kind of a standard number for a lot of the garages and the contractors I was dealing with and the metal garages. 
but since I'm building it myself I just brought it out to an even 40 by 40 um, yeah with the other big hitter 40 112 bucks for the trusses uh, I've got well over 100 sheets of OSB um, vinyl siding for the new edition as well as the existing garage gonna be at about 6500 bucks on that and um, roof 1400 plus another couple hundred obviously for um, underlayment but uh, uh, what I the, the phase I'm at right now is um, that's the dream to be under 30,000 I can tell you it's not going to be under 30,000 uh, there's just there's no way um, and I'll show you kind of why I'm already learning that oh while I'm in here though let me show you a great tool these are on Amazon it is an automatic laser level and this thing is awesome so I need to do a lot of grading bring in a lot of material 50 bucks on Amazon for one of these things it's not a professional grade tool by any means but if you need to quickly um, do some basic grading that thing is it, it, this thing's been a, an absolute godsend for me for 50 bucks and it comes with a little magnetic mount if you want to do it that way it has a standard ca um, camera style I think it's a quarter inch threaded connection on it so I just have it sitting on a camera tripod uh, it's not bright enough to be used during the day so I just go out at dusk and make my marks put my sticks in um, so I get an idea where I need to be from a grade standpoint but that little thing's been awesome I also went and uh, again on Amazon picked up a new nailer for uh, this will drive three and a half inch framing nails so that will make building things a whole lot easier but let me go take you out to the site and actually I'll throw some pictures in hopefully right now of what it looked like before I started anything so you can get an idea how much work this actually is we're up on a hill so everything I do here is ten times harder than it would be on a level lot and this is no exception so we'll come out of the garage here we'll turn around and you can see I've already brought in a whole lot of fill just to bring this grade up and we have a long way to go um, did a ton of clearing of trees and uh, had some monsters that we took down here just like those ones about 110 feet and spent the day today cleaning that up and uh, stacking it all up so that uh, I've got a guy coming tomorrow to pick up that uh, wood from me and we got a whole mess still left in the woods that I've got one still left I gotta chop up but it's getting there uh, this is the uh, pad that I'm building and uh, it turns out to be a lot higher than I thought it was gonna be so just for reference I know this is probably tough to see in a video but that uh, mark on the stick is where the finished floor level will be so I don't know if you can tell but I still have about a foot and a half to bring up on this grade all the way back and since we were doing all this work I thought it may make more sense to make sure I have access around the back of the garage since I'm putting a door in the back and I do snowmobile right from the door of the house so I'll be able to come out of my back garage door and I'm going to be building a access road down this way through the woods so I don't have to have snowmobile going across the lawn um, or trying to get over the snow banks in the winter it's going to have its own direct route right out of here cleared a lot of land that I wasn't planning on clearing but when you drop 110 foot pines it tends to take a lot of stuff out on the way down I learned so now I have a nice big wide open pretty flat area in the back there for storage and it's really out of sight of the house um, let me see if I can get you some perspective over here it's really out of, out of view the house is tucked back over there so that'll be a great little hiding spot for you know trailers or anything else that I don't need to garage but I also don't want to look at sitting you know sitting on the lawn when you first see the house the uh, little BX has been earning its keep here but uh, I guess that makes sense because she's gonna help me build her garage where she can finally stay but it is a mess Oh, phone's ringing. Um, so, lost my thought of train. But yeah, this thing's taking a beating. I, uh, <laughs> but it, the amount of material that thing can move is, you would never believe that a machine that small can move. And, well, you see. See what it does. This is my uh, neighbor's excavator, which he has uh, generously let uh, me borrow for as long as I need to have it here. So that came in handy, especially with the thumb, 
to remove a couple of stumps that were would have been in the footprint of the garage so obviously I can't leave those there and build and pour on top of that um, it also uh, believe it or not the BX did the I would say 90% of this work um, just digging down and the reason for that was I hadn't got the excavator yet and I was really concerned I was going to hit all kinds of ledge here and I did not there's a little bit on the side there but nothing within four feet uh, where I have to run the four foot frost walls so we've got the the toughest run done and uh, phone's ringing again so uh, yeah that's kind of where we're at it is this looks a whole lot different and it's very strange to see something that you've looked at for years you, know, you pull out a few trees and bring in some fill and all of a sudden it looks like a completely different property and I'll walk you down the uh, path here just so you can get some more perspective on how much fills coming in and how much more is to come to uh, get everything up to kind of where I need it to be and uh, just talking to my trucking guy and he's clearing his a day in his schedule next week after seeing what I end up needing to do he's just gonna spend a day trucking it in on a triaxle until uh, till I've got what I need here so this is it um, this is the the start of what will hopefully be my dream garage and um, I will uh, kind of shoot some video here as we're going through it and building it and uh, if you've watched my other videos you know I'm extremely cheap so anywhere I can cut a corner that isn't going to um, affect you know, obviously safety or uh, how the thing looks overall I'll be able to show you that and hopefully I can fill these videos with some good tips and tricks um, I don't have a very good back at all and I'm building it myself so I'm going to use some ingenuity here to figure out ways of getting things done without hurting myself because that would not be good but at any rate stay tuned these uh this should be very interesting if nothing else and when it's all said and done uh, it's definitely going to be worth all the effort and for less than half the cost of having it done um, by a, a, a contractor which granted would, it would be nice but uh yeah under grand is not in the budget for a garage Thanks as always for watching. Please make sure you hit subscribe and the little bell thing or whatever it is so you get notified when I post up a new one. But uh, wish me luck and uh, I'll see you soon.